Dirk's backyard. Now, tonight's celebrity gardener is newsreader Ian Ross. Now, you would know him nowadays from the Today program, but he's been there for 33 years reporting news for the Nine Network. In 1968, he was there watching Wally Mellish at the Glenfield Siege. He was also there in 1977 for the Granville train disaster. And of course, when fires threatened Sydney in 1994, not only was he there, but his own home was very much threatened. He didn't worry about his home. He continued to tell the world the story. The images of a state in crisis, three lives lost, more than 70 bushfires burning out of control. I bought this house in November and the bushfires came in the January and it was pretty scary because as you can see, I mean, there's the bush and there's the house. Right? Yeah. Sort of right in the line of fire. Ooh. Fortunately, uh, the bushfires didn't affect us, yeah. but it was terrifying here because, uh, you know, in the mornings when I'd have to go to work, at that time I was actually reading the news. Brian right. Henderson was away. And this whole area here was just raining, burning ash, you know, and we could see the fires burning on that ridge. It was scary. Hey, look at pressure there! Inside, fires inside! As the arc of fire tightened its hold around Sydney, the city itself was taken hostage. Now, am I allowed to say you've been with Channel 9 doing news for one third of a century? Am I allowed yeah. to say that? Well, you've said it now, <laughs> so I can't deny it. A third of a century. Sometimes it seems like 133 <laughs> years. <laughs> On a bad day. <laughs> Judge Staunton and the various counsel involved in the inquiry examined this whole area, walking up and down the tracks leading into Granville Station and paying particular attention to the crossover points. I mean, recently we had events like, uh, well, the Granville train disaster, yeah. and even before that, the Glenfield siege, which was mm. a huge story. Mm. I mean, it was just an immense story in which I was involved. And uh, I've recently seen footage from that, from the Glenfield siege, which is just, well, it's comic stuff. To me, it's comic stuff. It wasn't at the time. Yesterday, most of the newsmen covering this case thought uh, Superintendent Ferguson must have been joking when he said that he was prepared to wait three months for this man to come out. Yeah. A mere boy when you started, of course. Well, I was. I was a callow youth. <laughs> callow youth. And uh, thrown in at the deep end, you and, know. And, and something of a fashion statement in your own right. <laughs> <laughs> That's very unkind. Now, cut that out. This is the part of the house, the outside part of the house, where we mostly live oh, cool. because it's i mean as you can see it's compact yeah. mostly deck easy to look after we have an awning here which is wonderful on a summer afternoon just extend that out and uh it's wonderful on on a saturday or a sunday to sit out here and have a bit of a barbecue a few glasses of wine delightful where we are now is in the reserve outside my house this is the fringe of, of the national park yep. This mightn't look much. It's a grevillea, but it's a pretty rare grevillea, which you're probably aware of, yeah. which is, uh, it's rare, but it occurs mostly in this particular area where yeah. I live. Yeah, this is an important one in that this was nearly going to become extinct, and it's very important to see resi local residents like yourself who are preserving it. That's, that's a, a lot of brownie points for that. Yeah. Excellent. Roscoe, give us a quick look at your breathing technique. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, are you worried about my baby girl? Come on, Roscoe. Come on, you can do it, Roscoe. Oh, Come on, big boy. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Come on. <laughs> Just in case people have tuned in and have been thinking, you know, we haven't taken our tablets today, we should explain that Roscoe's dog, Bonnie, is in the process of she's delivering. She's puppy, is indeed. Yeah. <laughs> the puppies have more or less surpassed you for notoriety at Channel 9, like the switchboard's been inundated with calls. Well, there has been a tremendous amount of interest, you know. It's yeah. just extraordinary. This one here, he was first born. This is Monty with the big head and the attitude. <laughs> and this one here, this is little Stevie. Stevie Liebman. <laughs> He's a bit of a troublemaker, this is he? young Stevie. All right, welcome to the dungeon, Don. <laughs> Just mind your head here. It's pretty hazardous. I notice wherever I look, every... Is there any way you are not, Don? <laughs> Yeah, Every sorry. brush and all the rest of it is all neatly laid. Very tidy person. <laughs> well, it's a, an orderly mind. It's developed over the years. I wasn't always that way. All right. <laughs> this is his newspaper box in the corner there. Is this your pin-up? No, but the dogs are supposed to do their business. 
Is that what the paper? <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Prime Minister Howard will come under more pressure today over the Bob Woods affair. I saw one report, and you could have knocked me over with a feather after I read it. And they're talking about some of the feuds in television. And they were talking about you and Monty as if there was a real feud. What have you got oh. there? My pearl was perfectly clean before you arrived. Oh, <laughs> rubbish. You can't. Roscoe, look. It's, it's not... <laughs> Monty and I have a lot of fun with each other, as you'd be aware. Mm. Um, and there's a bit of thrust and parry. <laughs> but we're good mates. I mean, he and I have got along extremely well from day one. Um, we see each other socially. In fact, he was in my kitchen at seven o'clock this morning <laughs> while I was back. Oh, nice. <laughs> you won't get much for that lot, I can tell you. I Is have there to say, stuff? Roscoe, you're coping with this very well. You look, and I'm not trying to be flattering, but you do look very young to be a grandfather. You can come back any time, Don. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I'm what I am, 57, just on 57 years old, so that, that qualifies me for the grandfather mm -hmm. stakes. But I was married young. Two grandchildren, is it? Four. Four. Four and another one on the way very soon. Mm -hmm. Good. I noticed that some of the shots, it's a fairly big family. So this... <laughs> yes. Well, I have three children. Right. Three children, and I come from uh, a large family myself. My mother was a showgirl. Um, she was a, a dancer and a singer in musical comedy. Are you the only one of your family that sort of took, I mean, I know you, it's, it's not quite right, but took into the... On the boards. Well, whatever, in the <laughs> entertainment industry or whatever. Yes, I am. I am. The others have, have pursued other careers. Good Does every newsreader sort of want to stand up and yell, I, you know, I'm, get over the oppression of having to be self-controlled all the time, so I'm me, I can crack jokes, I can do things, or... Well... I mean, I suppose the answer is that if you work in the news business and you haven't got a sense of humour, mm. you might as well give it away. Mm. I mean, a sense of humour is an essential safety valve for somebody who daily has to report misery, has to report human tragedy, has to report more bad news than good news. As, as a news presenter, I have to walk a fairly careful line, obviously. The news is the news, but once that's dispensed with, um, then you can perhaps loosen up a bit and have a bit of fun. <laughs> right, that's, that's Bosco and Mommy. Now Tara and Ralph, Mommy and Ross. <laughs> About a police investigation. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> What do they say? These days you only get eight or ten years for murder. You've been there for 33 years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No news is good news. No journalists is even better. Nicholas Bentley, 1907 to 1978. British cartoonist and writer.